I'm Kathy Ann White. I want to introduce you to a metal collage process workshop. The reason I'm calling it a process is because it's not a specific how-to. It's ideas on how I go from one end to the other to make a metal piece and how I work with different elements and change my mind and put it together. So um, take a look at the video and if you have any comments or questions, please email me. I'd love to talk to you about it. There are all sorts of ways to work with metal collage. And I've been doing a lot of the crochet type thing and using hardware cloth. This is a piece today I would like to start and go through it and decide where it's gonna go and what I'm gonna do to it. First, I just wanna show you something really quick. And that would be um, where I started doing some type of metal collage work. It started with using a piece of hardware cloth, if you can see for the backing. And eventually this piece would have uh, an actual box. It would probably be about an inch and a half wide hardware strip, hardware cloth strip around the side and then one on the bottom. But I would put the whole entire piece together first because it was really difficult to attach it to a box. So it's easier for me to put the box on here and then um, put it together the rest of the way Sometimes, you know, that might not be true, but that's mostly the way I've been doing it. All I'm doing in this one, obviously, is cutting a coil. And so then there's a matching coil that comes out of here, and I don't always um, use, well, I might use it on another thing, or I might cut it up or do something else different from it. Then we can cut to this piece of actual metal again, which is a metal print. This one was done on a printing plate, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was, because you can see the turquoise is the uh, actual emulsion side. So my work went from being a little bit flat, like this type of thing, to trying to develop it in more layers and making it a little more interesting. The layers did come from crochet, and you can see this box hasn't been finished yet. This would be the box of a hardware cloth box, and you could see the actual emulsion, so obviously I printed the silver side, and this is stainless steel wire that I crocheted to put on the inside of the box to add depth, and then I have other things on the outside where I layered a full piece and then started doing other pieces on top of it. Some of this still needs to be altered, and then the actual bottom of the box needs to be put onto the piece. Um, the thing about a piece like this is I'm trying to get a lot more depth in my work and seeing where I can go with the different layers and this, uh, this crochet work is something that I really, really like to do, so it's something I do, but I'm going to give you some other ideas if you want to go along that way. Another thing that I do is I have a guy in town that does metal work and I have him bend this rod to actually make me some frames. Then once in a while, I will take a piece of actual screen, this is copper mesh, and I will use it around one of the metal pieces to give some depth to an artwork. And then as the work is hung, you can see maybe the depth of it so on this one, again, yes, I did do a crochet top over it, and I think I've shown this in videos before, you've probably seen this, but um, it, it's, it's one of the ways that I've started to get more dimensional with the work that I'm doing. So then, let's just take a look at this really quick, because we'll bring, I'll bring you back to the piece that I'm going to work on. This is a process workshop, so I'm trying to show you what I go through or when I start to figure out as I move my work to another dimension or what I'm going to do with it. This is a printer plate, printing plate. Um, nice thin metal, easy to cut, and that's what this came from. This is actually me sketching out loud because I like to work in a material rather than working on a sketchbook paper because it never looks the same for me and I am not a very good sketcher. So, this was cut from a piece like this. And what my actual objective in this is, is I'm taking a, a sculptural welding class right now to answer some of my own problems for my work. And I'm gonna do a series of small curved lines and uh, solder them together 
in the thought of making the lines larger apart and maybe using what's between for some of my digital work. I, this has like gone nowhere yet. So I'm just going to show you that I took this piece and I cut an original piece out of it. And then I just cut another one and just really cut up the whole entire piece of um, printing plate. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm going to use this printing plate so I don't ruin my totally big one here. Let me move this. And then I'm going to figure out a, con a configuration for this because I no longer think that, um, I, I well, I don't actually think anything right now. I am not sure at all where this was going to go. When I originally cut it, I was. Then I got into the more textural pieces like the um, piece I just showed you with a uh, hardware cloth box. And now I'm going to take this piece and collage it in a way that I have no idea what I'm doing. And that's the point of this process class. I'm going to let you see how I walk through some of these things with myself and come up with something that might work and might not work. So I'm going to try it first and play with it on another printing plate before I totally destroy this one. So when I start to break, uh, start a project, I actually gather a whole bunch of stuff. Some I may use, some I may not use. Doesn't matter to me. I just need to have enough materials that I can figure out what I am doing. So let me show you what I have here. I actually have two of these prints, which is cool because then if I need more, I've got more, which is really a nice thing. Um, I'm going to have a hole punch, which is normal for me. I've got wire. I've got other kind of wire. I have this... Um, these two sets, one is a dapping block and one is the other thing will um, let me cut metals. So I can take this in here and I'm trying to do this very carefully because I knocked my camera off before. But anyway, um, I can put this in here and cut pieces and I think it may not be at the specific spot I want it. might have not have been yet. It was over towards the end. But anyway... I can get different pieces out of this, make holes in them for whatever. I can use this other uh, little dapping block here, they call this. isn't the dapping block, but anyway. Um, I can make indentations, if you can see that. Now, on this kind of materials, if you're going to do them going out, sometimes I put tissue or something on the inside or some, something kind of soft so it doesn't mess up the print, but most of the time it probably is going to mess up the print anyway. So I usually will put it on top of this piece of metal, and then I'll just find where this goes, which is about there, and then I'll lightly tap it around just to make a little bit of a dent. And then um, if I want to, I can actually almost pound that halfway out of there and do different things to it and all I'm doing is looking for ways to manipulate this stuff and see if I want to use it someplace coming up and like I said I already have this clean sheet here so I'm in good shape for not having to worry about not having enough materials if I want to use that and the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to if I can find it right here oh I have some this was actually cr crocheted steel wire. It's a little bit beefy. This, on the other hand, is, this does not have to be done by you. You can get meshes and that type of thing on the market that are knitted. And this is in um, a, uh, what do you call it? It's, a, it's an aluminum, but it's one of the bright ones. It's one of the very polished ones. It's not a stainless and it's not... A different kind of thread will actually it's not thread wire that will rust it is already coated and although I did knit this on a knitting machine there are people that you can buy these from and in different sizes and stuff and in different colors so you actually can get some of these really cool meshes by looking on the internet for them since I don't really buy them I don't have a lot of sources for them but then I also have this 
this piece and it is getting a little pitted and I think I got some stuff on it when I was using it one time before I printed it and so it made some marks in it. But this is some mesh that I might be able to use. And then I actually have this which could raise parts of it. I'm not, I seriously don't know what I'm doing yet so we don't have an idea what any of this will do or if I will even use it. And then this is the uh, rusted out um, frame thing that I have. So I'm thinking to maybe look at it this size and if I have to I could build it on hardware cloth and put it on here and then it will hang on the wall if I want it to. But like I said I don't know where that's going. So now my job is to take these things and decide how I might want to collage or use them. So you've seen the array of products and now I'm going to get to work and see what will happen as I try to put some kind of configuration together and I'm going to shoot for this size which I think is 10 by 12. You can get a little piece of actually woven kind of together. This is really knitted. It's by finger knitting. Let me show you how you do that. I messed it up the first time I was trying to do it so let's look at it now. Okay, hopefully you can see this. I'm trying to do a little bit of uh, over here that you might be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to wrap, and you want to try to keep this loose because as it goes further, it gets tight. It's hard to do. You want to wrap around your fingers. So, and again, I said to try to keep it loose. You'll see what, if I don't keep it loose enough, what happens. Okay, this last one, I'm going to twist because it just makes it easier. Finger knitting is a lot easier with yarn, but we're not doing it with yarn. Okay, so all I have to do is take this piece and put it on top and then pull this piece over. And this piece goes on top and you pull this piece over. And this piece goes on top and you pull that over. And you try not to get, this is where I start to get it too tight in here and then it's hard to pull over. So you continue to do this, and when you get here, you just come right back. So you can actually lay it over all your fingers and just come over and pull and pull. And this is when you have to be sure you're not getting it too tight because that's when you get messed up. And I lost this one. It's pretty, pretty hard to totally get lost because you're using wire here, so it's kind of good. Okay. So, wait, I lost that one too. Okay, so then you're going to go back again the same way. You're just going to put it over and pull it over. It's kind of just like loom knitting, except your finger is the loom. So if you look at loom knitting, you can figure out to do the same thing on your fingers. Okay, now here's what happens. When you get to the, well, I mean, you could make this really long, which I'm not going to do, because I think you get the picture. You want these all to stay where they are, Otherwise, you're going to lose your knit. So, all you have to do is cut your chain long enough and then run something back through these so they don't end up pulling out. Which would be the same thing in knitting, which you would have to do. Now you have like a little piece of randomly done wire. This is uh, another one, and I didn't put anything back through here. So I could just rot, take this back through so I don't lose it. You can also just bend this right to the edge. Doesn't matter. I'm just doing this now because I just didn't want it to fall apart. So now I actually have some weird wire pieces that if I wanted to put it so under something for texture or something, I could do that. So that's an easy way to do those kind of things if you don't know how to knit or crochet or do anything else. So. I'm going to start working on this piece and see where it goes. First thing I am going to do is cut some shapes. And I'm just going to keep working and then we'll, I might do some voiceovers later after it gets to that point. And I might even look here to see if I have a base that would be close to this. And not that this is going to matter because I don't know where it's going or how big the pieces are going to be or what's going to get cut off of this. So, but um, it'd be a good place to start.
comes the part when things start to change a lot. Um, I have had this configuration, forget about this screen, on this piece of hardware cloth on top of this metal. And now I had figured it that it was going to be sort of like this. Then I added, I've been playing with some of these things you can see, I just don't stop working here. Um, I took a piece of the coil that I had pulled off and put it through here. Then I took another piece of the coil that I had pulled off and I actually wrapped, which took me forever, this wire around here to kind of put it like this, kind of put this like this. And then for me, there wasn't enough depth behind it. So, because it was flat like this and you could just see through there. So now I'm in the process and just wanted to show you of manipulating this piece of what do I call it? Oh gosh, I always forget these words when I'm doing this. Um, it's a mesh. It's a copper mesh. So now I'm going to take this copper mesh and I'm using wire from behind. As you can see it here, little pieces of wire sticking up maybe. And I'm going to get this all configured down and start building again and see where it goes to. So I'll catch you up in a minute. Now I have this uh, all attached to the frame, if you can see it, and I'm going to pull this over because now it really is time for me to attach this to the frame, and I like that so much better because it's not all flat. I'm really getting sick of flat. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is this is going to probably end up here. I should pull this down. Let's see. Okay, that's going to end up there. And before that ends up there, somehow I'm going to get this to go to there. I think. Now, as I put it together, things can change. As I mess this up here. Then my next plan is to maybe use some of this, and I'm not sure about that. And I pounded up some of the mesh, some other mesh, and then I started making little pieces that could give me some more 3D stuff. And I really don't know where I'm going with it. It only, I have to start working with it to decide what I'm going to do. I thought I had something else here, but. Um, so some of this is going to start getting tied down so that it has a look of where it's actually going to be so that I can then make sure of what I'm going to add and what I want to do with it. And this is where this piece ended up. I made some other choices in here because some things I didn't like worked. I like the shape of a coil better so I cut several of them. I used some more of the copper, uh, folded up some of these little pieces that came from different sections of the piece, and rolled some up. You know, if you cut this metal very, very thin, it will roll up itself, and it doesn't roll up quite that much. I just helped it a little bit. So the back of the piece is, and I have to get that to go down. Um, the back of the piece is a hardware cloth to give it some stabilization on the actual frame so the the meshes have some place to rest in the middle so they don't get all messed up. And then um, actually I think maybe you could see I used a small wire that went all around the outside edge to put the hardware cloth on. And then after giving it a little bit more dimension I used some crochet and some knit stuff I had, some metal copper mesh, and then just continued to collage and put pieces where I thought they would go. So this is probably more for inspiration, I would say. There are some techniques in here you might be able to use. I'm a little crazy about metals right now, so I really like using them on things. And um, you can collage 
anything this way. Absolutely. You can even do these bases and then not use metals on top. So um, go for it. And if you get some stuff and you do some interesting little configurations with any type of collage, go ahead and send me a picture and I can put it on my blog.